Hello again, and welcome back to the Focus Attack Tech Corner. It's been a while since we last spoke, so today we're coming back to talk about Sam Dux's latest button model, the Crown 202. It utilizes a Silver Cherry MX mechanical keyboard switch for high speed input. Many have asked if the SDB202 can support other mechanical switches, and we are pleased to say that it can. Here's an example of how a 202 button looks completely disassembled. Our goal for this video is to teach you how to successfully swap the mechanical switch of your choosing into your 202s. In my case here, I will be using a red Cherry MX switch. On the right is a still assembled SDB202. On the second to the left is the 202's default silver switch. To the left of the silver switch is the barrel of a 202 with the switch base still installed, minus the switch plate. If everything goes according to plan, I will end up with a red Cherry MX in my 202 instead of a silver one. I prefer to use a small flathead screwdriver for this task. It makes manipulating the locking tabs for the switch base and button plunger a little easier. Go ahead and have the screwdriver ready, but keep it aside for the time being. We only need the push button for the first step. First you will want to remove the locking ring from the push button. It serves no purpose besides getting in the way when it's outside of your arcade stick, so go ahead and rotate it counterclockwise away from the top of the push button until it's free of the threads. Put it somewhere that you won't lose it, because you'll need it later. Next you'll need your screwdriver. There are two holes in the sides of the push button barrel that have tabs in them. Both of these tabs have to be depressed, one at a time, while working the push button plunger upwards and out of the barrel to release the plunger itself. Be careful and take your time with this. The plungers are made of thick plastic and they're fairly resilient, but if you are too aggressive you could damage the tabs. If you feel that a screwdriver is too sharp for your liking, another small pointed blunt tool will do the job nicely. Work the plunger free of the barrel, and once it's released, make note of the direction that the plunger is meant to be reinstalled, and then you can set it aside. Flip the push button barrel over to get a good view of its back end, the switch base. The switch base has two locking tabs that need to be depressed while pushing the base through to the top of the push button barrel. In my experience, this is best done using your flathead screwdriver to work one side through at a time. A little bit of force is necessary here, as the base fits very firmly in the barrel. I use my thumb for force between the 110 blades while holding the front of the barrel with the rest of my hand, like so. Once again, this is another place that is somewhat finicky, so it's best to not rush and take your time. This is arguably the most difficult part of this process, so go through it slowly and you should make it through with no issues. It may be necessary to alternate sides repeatedly until you've successfully squeezed the base out from its position, so don't worry if it isn't something that comes immediately. You can actually see me struggling here a little bit. Maybe it's just on-camera performance anxiety. With a bit of persistence, the base will be released from the barrel and you can remove it from the barrel entirely. You are now down to the switch and the switch base. Take note of the orientation of the base in relation to the barrel upon the base's removal. It can only go back one way. A good way to remember it is that the blades point in the same direction as the slots on the barrel that hold the plunger in place. Go ahead and set the barrel aside. With the base free, we can get to the fun part. Let's get down to brass tacks. Now that you're holding the base in your hand, if you look closely, there is a tiny tab that locks the switch in place. I'll point at it here with my screwdriver. If you use the blade of your flathead just underneath the tab and gently, but firmly lift up, the switch will back out of the switch base. Once you've popped it free, you can set your screwdriver aside and pull the switch out of the base. As with everything else, make a note of the switch's orientation in relation to the switch base. The mechanical switch is key to install a specific way. Another thing to add here is that the plate that the switch rests on is actually a separate piece from the switch base itself, so be careful not to lose it or let it fly out if you turn the base upside down. It is a critical part, so it is imperative to keep a close eye on it. The best thing to do here is to hold onto the blades of the switch base while removing the plate, because the blades of the switch base can also fall out when turning the base upside down if you're not careful. They can be a pain to reinstall, so do your best to avoid disturbing them. I realize that this is a lot to unpack here, but this part of the procedure is the most careful you will have to be in the process. Make sure that the blades are seated firmly in the switch base at all times during this procedure. Set the switch base aside for a moment. I have my new switch of choice here in my hand that I have chosen to be the replacement for the default Silver Cherry MX switch. I have chosen a Red Cherry MX because of its convenience and availability to me for this demonstration. 
and is not at all different in terms of compatibility with the Silver Cherry MX, so installation will be easy. Start by bringing back the switch base, which by itself doesn't do much, but with the switch plate from earlier added, we have another piece of the puzzle. Remember, the switch plate installs into the base only in a specific direction, with the circular peg facing down into the switch base. It is important to get this correct. It does not necessarily snap in, more or less rest in the switch base. I would highlight the pin slots of the switch plate here, but due to their size I will just point them out with my screwdriver instead. Pay close attention when installing your new switch to make sure that you have oriented the switch in the proper direction for the pins to line up with the switch plate. Take your new switch and seat it carefully, but firmly, into the switch base and the switch plate. Coming back to the push button barrel, it is time to rejoin it with the switch base. As a reminder, the base installs through the top of the push button barrel, with the blades lining up parallel to the slots of the push button barrel. You will know when the base is properly seated, because both of the locking tabs on the switch base will be showing as fully open on the bottom of the push button barrel. A little bit of challenge is fun, isn't it? You're almost to the end. Grab the push button plunger and make note of its locking tabs and line them up with the slots of the push button barrel. You will have to squeeze the tabs inward while seating the push button plunger into the barrel. It can be stubborn due to the stiffness of the plastic, but a tiny bit of force is okay. Give the button a few clicks to ensure proper engagement. Last but not least is the locking ring. The direction the ring is installed on the push button barrel matters. If you look closely, it has teeth on one side. The teeth are meant to be pointed upward, for a better grip when being installed onto the control panel of your arcade stick. Be sure to orient it properly, then seat it onto the threads and spin it clockwise to send it up the threads of the barrel. Now you're finished! Except for however many other push buttons you might have left. The process gets easier as you do it. Congratulations on your first successful switch install in the Crown SDB202. There are many other switches that work with this button, so feel free to explore. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.